colleagues, partners, and friends of the Institut des Finances Basse Flehan, and welcome to the first IOF talk hosting Mr. Arthur Germont, Country Director of the Agence Française de Développement. For those of you who do not know Mr. Germont, he was appointed Director of the AFD Lebanon Office in August 2020. He previously held the position of Deputy Director of the Fragility, Crisis, and Conflict Department within AFD. The series of talks we are launching today is organized in the framework of the 25th anniversary of the Institute. In fact, 25 years after its creation in 1996, the Institute is a partner par excellence of the international community and a major contributor to the structural reforms required by the donor community. Having served as a platform for dialogue throughout its 25 years of experience, the Institute has accumulated a considerable network of national, regional and international friends and partners who are happy to engage with us this year in a constructive dialogue and share strategic plans, interesting initiatives, good practices, experiences, thoughts and reflections in an effort to inform, raise awareness and steer the debate. Therefore, starting today and throughout this year, the Institute will invite leaders and experts from Lebanon and abroad to contribute to a series of talks. And I am thrilled to be hosting today Mr. Arthur Germont, Director of the IFD, a French public development bank, but also the world's oldest development agency, which has been working for over 70 years to promote economic and social development in South countries and overseas France. IFD has been a partner of Lebanon since 1999 and has invested more than 1.1 billion euros in the country, taking actions to reduce vulnerabilities and assisting the country towards a more balanced and sustainable development path in a context of regional crisis. Monsieur Germont, the IFD is in the process of defining a new strategy for Lebanon for the period 2021-2025. But what is IFD? What does it do in Lebanon and what does it do for Lebanon? And how is it planning to help Lebanon cope with shocks and lay the foundations for a state at the service of the population? Hi, good afternoon, Novalak. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, and happy birthday to Institut des, des Finances. Um, what an honor to be your, your first talker, your first speaker on, 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 on this anniversary. Um, and I'm, uh, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, it's a great honor. So um, what is AFD and what do we do in, in Lebanon? Um, I hope you, you can clearly see my screen, right? It's all yes, good. yes, okay. yes, definitely. Um, so yeah, so AMD is, as you said, the oldest development bank in the world. We're actually approaching our 80th anniversary, which we'll be celebrating end of, of this year. And AMD, um, first, you need to know that obviously AMD is French. We're France's main development actor. We're not the, 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 the only one. I mean, there are other actors, and I'll come to, to that during the, the rest of the talk, but there's... The French Ministry of Foreign Affairs still deals with quite a significant part of uh, France's uh, development overseas aid, uh, including humanitarian aid, which does not, uh, which is not managed by, by AFD. Um, but so AFD is a group. We have three main branches. The, the first one is Agence Française de Développement itself, which um, will be the main focus of, of my, my, my talk. Uh, and mostly finances the pub public sector and, and NGOs. And I'll, I'll present a AFD itself a, a bit more in, into a bit more details. We also have Popaco, which is a, de a subsidiary dedicated to the to the private sector. And from the first of July this year, we'll be joined by Expertise France, which is a technical cooperation agency. For those who know the GI German GIZ, uh, Expertise France is the the French GIZ, although it's a bit smaller. Uh, AFD is dedicated to achieving the sustainable development goals and we, we pride our, ourselves in working very closely with our partners in the global south. Um, this, uh, our motto is towards a world in common and we, it's very important for us to say we're not, uh, wherever we go, we do not come with, uh, with, the, with like standardized approaches, we do not come with the teaching, preaching lessons, we're here to, to work with our partners in the 115 countries where, where we operate. And we have a very broad mandate, um, which, which has three main goals. The first one is the fight against climate change. The sec second one is social cohesion. And the third one is build peace building. And as you will see, um, all of this is quite relevant to our action in Lebanon. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to switch to the next slide. 
Uh, just a few numbers here. I will not get through all of them, but just say that we have 85 agencies throughout the world. So I'm adding the one in, in Lebanon. We have more than 3,000 employees and a lot of different projects worldwide. Um, I'm sorry for not having the latest numbers, as you can see, uh, my numbers end in 2019, but it's, that still gives you a very good idea of the magnitude of our funding worldwide. So that's 14 billion euros worldwide. And as you can see here, most of our funding actually comes in the form of, of loans, uh, because Agence Française de Développement mostly is a development bank. Um, so 10 billions out of these 14 billions came in the, in the form of loans, either to governments or to public companies, local authorities, etc. And we, we also have obviously a significant amount of, of grants, which we focus mostly on the African continent and a few, uh, no, no, happy few countries, including Lebanon which uh, for very uh, obvious reasons of the importance, strategic importance of Lebanon for France, but also uh, historically the impact of the Syrian crisis, Lebanon benefits from a very significant, of uh, quite a significant share of, of AFD's grants uh, worldwide. The sectors in which AFD intervenes are very broad and I will not go through, through all of them, it's just for, for you to get an idea. So it's basically anything that has to do with socio-economic de development from infrastructure to health and education through the pri private sector development, uh, governance, uh, environmental natural resources, etc. Et and here, just a few numbers on, our, on the impact we have on the ground. It's, I'm not going to go through them, it's there just for, for, for you to have a again, an idea of the magnitude of our, of our funding. Um, so that was AFD worldwide. Now, what do we do in, in Lebanon? As Rola, you, you mentioned, we've been present in Lebanon since 1999. So that's more than, than 20 years. And in Lebanon, as I said earlier, we are part of France's, um, France's presence. France is the, the fifth, the sixth, sorry, main donor of, of Lebanon. I'm sorry, the, the names here appear in, in, in French, but I mean, I'm sure you can all understand. Um, so France is amongst the, the main donors of, of the country and AFD represents the, the, the biggest chunk of, of, this, of this support. Our yearly funding over the past five years have amounted to more or less uh, 80 million euros. And as you can see, it's, it's been very diverse over the years, um, but we're trying to, uh, we can discuss that, but we're trying to, to have a bit more visibility for the future and have a more steady flow of, of funding. We have been active in a, in a lot of, of different sectors, which you can see on, on, on the right with a, with a the biggest chunk being allocated to education, infrastructure, water sanitation, and, and health. And as you will see for, for the future, these should remain our main focal areas. On the left-hand side here, you see a map of Lebanon and the dots represent the, the different lo location of our different projects. And as you can see, we are uh, present throughout the country, and this is actually something that is very dear to us, is to have to maintain that ability to reach out to all the vulnerable and, and commun communities and communities in need wherever they, they are in, in the country. And on the right hand side, you can see a few of the partners we work with. Um, on the top right hand corner, you can see our international partners, a lot of NGOs, some of them French, some of them from other nationalities, but also quite a few UN agencies. You can see UNRWA there, but we also work with the, with the UNICEF and the Red Cross, and we'll come back to the Red Cross a little later in the discussion, I guess. And on the, on the bottom corner, you can see quite a few of the Lebanese uh, civil society actors we, we work with, and I'll come back to that in just a moment, but that is very important for us, the, that ability to work with local partners that are uh, working very closely with the, um, with the, with, with the communities. Um, I do not, uh, th there's no logo for, for, for the Lebanese government, but obviously we work with the Lebanese government, although th there has been a, a shift in the, in the past uh, few years, and I'm, I'm going to elaborate a bit on that now. Um, historically, AFD was, to, all of AFD's funding was going through the, the Lebanese government, 
Um, and that was because we were mostly operating with loans until 2017. And since then, we, we've been allocated that possibility to, to use grant funding in, in Lebanon. And through that, we've decided to have a, have a wider range of actors we work with. And that, that was also a decision that was made based on our understanding of what, uh, what the country's priority needs were. Um, and I'm going to, to, to now try to, to give you um, the state of our current thinking on what AVD's future activities in the countries will be. Uh, knowing that we are in the process of developing a 2021-2025 strategy. So for us, the, the main question we're trying to address at the moment is what does it mean for a development actor such as AVD, a development bank, to, to operate in the context of Lebanon? a country that is going through numerous crises, protracted crises, um, knowing that we do not deal with humanitarian aid and we, our aim is to, to maintain a longer term view on the challenges that uh, the country is facing. So we've tried to, to balance these two short term and longer term issues that the country is, is facing and encapsulate it in a, in a, in a strategic purpose they would aim both to help the country cope with the different shocks it is facing, but while laying the foundations for a state that will be at the service of the different populations that live in the, that live in the country. How to achieve that? For us, we believe that there are three key strategic objectives we should be uh, trying to, to reach. The first one is, in the short term, to preserve or to maintain the development assets or gains of, of the country. And then what do I mean by development assets or gains is to acknowledge the fact that in the past, and this is still true to, to this day, Lebanon still has a few assets that made it an attractive destination for, for, for the rest of the region, for example, uh, mostly it's human capital and its infrastructure. And uh, this is of the utmost um, importance to, to maintain these these assets and to make sure that the different shocks the country is undergoing do not uh, completely um, uh, destroy the, these or, or, or um, diminish these these development assets. The second strategic objective for us is to make sure that we uh, that the country has the ability to mitigate the, the rising social tensions and we find a way of strengthening social cohesion between the different groups that live in this country. There's, there's, there was a very strong focus by the whole international community between 2017 and 2020 on, the, uh, on reinforcing the country's capacity to host the, the different refugee communities, mostly the Syrian and the Palestinian communities, and to also work with the host communities to diffuse or to, to, to mitigate the, the tensions that could arise from the presence of these refugees. The, the pictures changed a bit in Lebanon uh, over the, the course of 2020, and today there are rising tensions between all sorts of different groups, including between the different parts of, of the Lebanese community. And so far, it is critical that we, uh, we use some of our resources to mitigate those tensions. And finally, the, the third strategic objective for us is what I was saying earlier, to maintain the long-term view um, that, that, is, uh, that is the essence of a development bank. And there, we, we believe it is important, even in these times of crisis, to, to, to make sure that we still support the emergence of, of public actors that serve a, a long-term development agenda, but also to work with non-state actors that also um, have the capacity to uh, hold the government accountable. In the, the, the five sectors that we will be, we should be focusing our energy on are quite similar to what we've been doing in the past, although with uh, a, few, uh, a few differences here and there. The first sector for us, and there's no uh, order of priority there, the, no ranking of order. So just I'll, it's first, second, just as their PA on your screen, but it's, it's they, I mean, they, they are all equally important to us. The first uh, sector is healthcare. And maybe what, what's uh, the difference with what we've been doing in the past or something that we'd like to, to focus more of our energy on is the question of mental, mental health and psychological support. 
Um, I think the, the, the different crises have shown that there is there are increasing needs in the country. There's been a lot of talk around the, these those increased needs, but um, there's not a lot that is being done or not enough that's being done but at the moment. And we would like to make that one of the AFD signature in, in the country. The second sector uh, is the question of access to education, but taken in a very broad sense. So it goes through from basic education to vocational training to the question of the access to jobs, which obviously is becoming more and more critical in the, in the context of the, of, of the economic collapse that the, the country is undergoing. The third sector is access to water and sanitation, including the question of, of an improved or good governance, um, where AFD is playing a, a key role, especially in the emergence or the reinforcement of the water establishments and the, and, and the um, implementation of the, of the Code de Law, which was uh, recently approved. The fourth sector is the question of inclusive local de development, and I'll give a couple of examples in, in, a, in a couple of minutes. But the idea is there is to try to work at the local scale and to support develop, development initiatives supported by civil society actors and to, to make sure that the com that communities' voices are heard in terms of the choices of, of investment that are made in, in these communities and to work on the link between those communities and the, and, and the public bodies and the local authorities. And finally, the fifth area where we'll be focus, focusing our energy is uh, the question of, of the support of, to reforms of good economy, of, of economic and, and financial governance. And obviously the um, Institute of Finance should remain one of AFD's darlings and preferred partners. In terms That's of, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, and we have two cross-cutting uh, issues that we will be embedding in all our activities in Lebanon. The first one is climate change, which is one of AFD's markers worldwide. And here, um, obviously, for us, it doesn't make sense to finance any project that will not be resilient to, to climate change, and that applies essentially to your activities in, in water and sanitation and inclusive de development, but that will apply to all our activities. And something that is a, a bit different for, for us looking forward is the inclusion of all gender issues in all our projects. That's something that was already in our, in our, in our previous strategy, but um, what we believe we've been a bit lacking and this is something we really want to be more active on, proactive on, and to become a leader in terms of including gender in all our, all our different projects. Finally, I just want to give you a, a few examples of projects we, uh, we are financing in, in Lebanon. And sorry, just before I do that, I'm going to drink a bit of water because I'm choking here. So um, three slides. The first one on, on our health portfolio. On the left-hand side, uh, a couple of pictures of a mental health center that we're supporting in the Baalbek area. Um, I'm not going to say more than this at this point. I've already emphasized the importance of mental health for, for, for AFD in, in Lebanon. Uh, but just for you to know that we are currently working on a, on a second phase of, of, of this program with our, with our different partners. Um, and the middle uh, picture and the two pictures on the right are uh, of all, just to illustrate the partnership that we have with the Rafik Hariri University Hospital and the International Red Cross. It's been a very fruitful partnership, and I think we'll come back to that in a moment. Uh, but we're very proud of that partnership that has made it possible for, for a public hospital to be, become a leading actor in terms of the fight against COVID-19. In terms of education and, and access to jobs, on the left-hand side, a couple of pictures of uh, to illustrate the support we, we're bringing to UNRWA in terms of building schools, both in Beirut and in Nar el Barret, to increase access to education for, for, for the Palestinian refugees and the, and the host communities. And on the right hand side, a couple of pictures I took a couple of weeks ago in, in Basta, in Beirut. And that is uh, two micro-entrepreneurs that are being supported by uh, Mercy Corps, 
and that's uh, part of our of for Beirut Blast support. And so it's just to illustrate the the fact that we also want to preserve the livelihoods of of the of the Lebanese. And finally, in terms of inclusive lo local development, uh, a couple of illustrations on the right hand side. Uh, uh, picture that I took um, in March in, in Tir, and that's the Souks in Tir. I'm sure you've recognized it. And um, that's a program we have with CDR and the, the municipality of Tir, where we have financing the rehabilitation of the souk of the, of the harbor. And obviously the, this, is, um, this is also enhancing the attractivity of, of, the, of the city and making it easier for, for, and better for the populations to, to live in that part of, of the city. And on the, the, on the left-hand side, and that will be my, my last comment so, so far, um, a couple of pictures that were taken in Schmista uh, two or three weeks ago as well, uh, by, um, by one of our partners at FDC, a Lebanese NGO, that is part of a, a big reforest, reforestation program that we have across Lebanon. Um, that is called Parsifal, and the aim of that program is to reforest or to replant trees uh, over uh, 650 hectares. And there, on the top corner, you can see the first tree that was planted on, on that on that program. And we're very happy about that and very pleased because it took quite a long time to to, to get there. And and for us, it's very important. And it is a program that associates both. Syrian refugees and Lebanese host communities. And through this program, we're also hoping to, to create links between these communities and to mitigate the social tensions I was talking about just a little earlier. And voila, I will stop here for now. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. That's very interesting. I'm sure uh, our audience has plenty of questions, uh, but I'm going to start with my questions before I give them the floor. In the meantime, I invite our audience to write your questions in the chat box, and I'll try to address as many as I can to our guests. Uh, I have, there are two questions that I'd really like to ask. I might ask more, but we'll see how much time we have. I was thinking in the aftermath of August 4, the IFD worked not only to build the humanitarian efforts towards longer term recovery in Lebanon, but it also, it was also trying to build back better. How did it do that? What were the main projects and initiatives that you launched or pursued to this end? Arthur? Yeah. My, okay, sorry, I was trying to <laughs> switch the mic on again. Um, yes, um, I think for, for us, the, the Beirut Blast was, um, was a bit of, um, how to say it, l'épreuve du feu in terms of showing our ability as a development like to, to respond to, uh, to a crisis. Um, as I said, we're not a humanitarian actor, so normally a response to these types of crisis would not necessarily fall under our mandate. And actually, most of the of the of the action from France uh, in terms of responding to the blast were, were done directly by the Ministry of Foreign, French Minister of Foreign Affairs, the Centre de Centre de Crise de Situation, which are really involved and very active in in providing like. Uh, the, the, the life support, the immediate support in, uh, on the after, in the aftermath of the blast. On our side, we're still very proud of what we did. Um, we managed to secure 15 million euros in terms of extra funding. There's, so that's actually fresh funding. It was not like some very blast washing that we did. It's actually a new funding that was allocated to, to Lebanon. And these 15 million euros went to 11 projects, which is a lot uh, for us to, to, that's more than what we normally do in terms of, of projects in a single year. But we decided to allocate small, uh, small funding to a lot of organizations that we, most of them were already working with. Um, and the idea was to, to cover a very wide scope of, of sectors because the needs were so great in, in, in a lot of different sectors. Uh, we obviously took guidance from the French president when he came here on the 1st of September and, and when he, he said that for France, the, the focal areas would be health, education, and access to, to food, and, and working with civil society actors. Um, I'm not going to give you all the details of all the, the projects we funded. I just uh, went through the most recent uh, numbers we have, but so our funding in the end will make it possible to rehabilitate six public schools and two technical schools and includes distribution of, of tablets to 600 school kids because obviously in terms of COVID and, 
and for the parents in, uh, that are here, uh, they know how difficult it is to to, to do homeschooling and and how how important it is for kids to to have the the, the right um, the, the the right um, medium to be able to to to, to work online. Uh, our funding will also uh, support more than 200 micro entrepreneurs, and I, I gave a, a couple of, of examples just a few minutes ago. We'll be rehabilitating, or our funding will make it possible to rehabilitate two primary healthcare centers in Gurshamut and a quarantine hospital. Um, we'll also uh, be, sorry, we already are supporting Embrace and its hotline. Um, to make it possible for, for people to, to who are in distress to, to call any time of, of, of the day or, or night and get the psychological support that they, they need. Uh, we'll, we'll be re rehabilitating 100 plus housing units, could uh, make it possible for Arc-en-Ciel to co collect and treat more than 10,000 tons of glass debris uh, collected from different uh, parts of the cities Absolutely. and also supporting numerous smaller local initiatives in terms of uh, community canteens, for example. Um, and just to, to, to say that although we're not a humanitarian actor, we're very happy and very proud uh, to make it possible to, to cut through AVD's internal bureaucracy and to have a, a turnaround time that was four to five times faster than what we normally do on, on, on a project appraisal and signing and disbursement. So for us, that was a very big achievement. And it was it was made possible because uh, it is Lebanon and Lebanon is a special place and a special place requires special needs. <laughs> Thank you, Arthur. We're always very thankful to France and to President Macron for everything you've done in the aftermath of August 4. I'm going to address you another question because that one is really, it has always uh, felt very, very interesting to me. You And you mentioned Rafi'il Hariri University Hospital. We know that the IFD had a very successful collaboration with the Rafi'il Hariri University Hospital, and it provided it with substantial support to face the COVID-19 pandemic. What are, in your opinion, the key factors of success? And do you plan to replicate a similar collaboration with other state institutions? That's a, that's a super interesting question, um, <laughs> I must say, uh, because for us, the, what we've built and done with the La Ficarreri University Hospital and, and the Red, International Red Cross is, um, is some, some other blueprints of what we want to do in, in Lebanon, or, or at least very, very illustrative of the way we, we work in, in Lebanon. Um, let me explain why. Um, so obviously, uh, it is a public hospital. But our funding actually is not going directly to the to the hospital. We decided to go through the International Red Cross because the International Red Cross was have been working with the with a, the hospital for for more than two to three years, putting in place a lot of processes, assessing the the priority needs, and uh, working on the governance, making sure that um, a lot of things were in place, uh, and making it possible then to to de develop a very significant program because they have allocated more than 25 million euros to, to, to the hospital. Um, so for us, it's, it's very important because through that program, we want to prove that it's possible in Lebanon to have a functioning public hospital in a country where a lot of, uh, a lot of the healthcare is provided by, by the private sector. And that's also true in education, for example. It is very important for us to, to show that it is possible to, to rebuild the trust in, in public institutions by starting uh, with, the one that, with one that is delivering uh, indispensable healthcare to very vulnerable communities. Um, we believe that uh, so far it's been a, a great success. I mean, time will tell, but so far it's, it's, been, it's been quite uh, really well working. And if, if we try to understand what the key success factors are, I would say there are mainly three. The, the, first, the first one is the fact that it's a, it's a long-term partnership. It takes time to build institutions. Um, I think sometimes in the face of emergency and crisis, we tend to lose, to, to forget that. But it, you do not build an institution overnight. And you do not rebuild an institution overnight. So it's very important to, 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 to work on day one with the idea that it will take several years to, to get to where you want to go. And that is the, that is the, the, the view that the International Red Cross ICRC was taking. And it's quite new for them um, because they're, they're a pure humanitarian actor in, in the first place. And when they approach AED, 
we told them we're interested in, in working with you in the hospital, but it's, it's based on the premise that we will take the, the long-term view and our analysis of the needs of the hospital will not be year by year, but back in 2019, we're already looking at what would be, would be happening in 2022, 2023. Um, so that's the first, uh, the, the first uh, key factor. The second one, which is linked to that, is that uh, you need to build trust. Uh, and the, the, the building of trust can only be done through that, uh, through that, that longer term view. The third, um, the, the third and last uh, key success factor for, for me is uh, you need a champion. And the champion cannot be AUD, cannot be the International Red Cross. It has to be the hospital there we, we have we're very privileged to to have dr firas Abiyat, which everybody knows by now um and he's he's completely instrumental in having a vision in knowing where he wants to go and knowing something that is very important is that he does not want to be working with AFD for the next 10 years his objective is to get rid of us by 2023 because then he knows that he's he's actually managed Sorry, to do yeah. what he wanted. Internet. Internet. Hello? No, 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 I'm this micro now. I think in, I think uh, in the yeah. current, I think he has had uh, yeah. <laughs> You're back. Thank you. In my back. Yeah, you're back. Hello. Okay, sorry. So I, 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 I was about to finish, but I, I don't know. Wait, what did I get cut off? You were, you were saying that he was planning to get rid of you by 2023. Again, I can hear you. Lost you. Ah, sorry. Um, can you hear me again? Yes, now we can. Yes. Ah, great. Sorry. So where, where did you lose me? Hello. Yeah. Voilà. Can you hear me? Um, yes, yes. Uh, ça coupe un peu, but we can hear you. Um, maybe you need to wait a, a minute until the, um, the connection is a little better. Sorry. Okay. Let's. Now we can hear you. It should be better. Yeah. Picture is still, but we can hear you. Okay. Sorry go ahead. That. No, that's fine. No, so um, I, I'm not sure where, where, where you lost me, but I, I was about to, to finish and I was saying that. The, um, the end goal of, of, of that support to the Rafi Kariri University Hospital is actually for us to, to exit the, the, the project and to exit the hospital because by then it, 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 will, it will actually uh, mean that the, the, the hospital is sustainable both, both technically, financially, in terms of governance. And I think this is very important and we share this vision with Dr. Fira Sabiat. That's, that's great news. <laughs> <laughs> Just so so the, for, for yeah. us, I, I was saying it, it is it is a blueprint, um, and just to give you a, a couple of other examples, and I'll be much briefer, don't worry. The first one is in terms of, of health, um, we, are, we have decided, as I said, to, to support the rehabilitation of the quarantine hospital. We signed the, the financing agreement with UNICEF, for, I don't know, like four weeks ago. And Initially, it was only going to be uh, a project about the rehabilitation and the reconstruction of the of the new building of the Quarantina Hospital. And as the discussions are unraveling, we're realizing why not do what we try to what not try to do with the Quarantina Hospital, what we're doing with the Rafi Carrera University Hospital. And so we are launching this discussion with the Quarantina Hospital and seeing how we can support them in terms of understanding the, the, the needs in terms of how they're, 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 they run the hospital, in terms of governance, etc. And beyond the, the health sector, um, I would like to emphasize the fact that we are taking this view of how to work with the, to, to build public institutions, even if we work with non-state actors, uh, in all of the different sectors that we operate in. And then, for example, in the water and sanitation sector, uh, I'm hoping to, to sign a significant program with the Becca Water Establishment in the, in the, the coming weeks um, to support uh, big wood and sanitation infrastructure in the Ersal area. And there, what is significant about that, that program is that we intend on signing the financing agreement directly with the water establishment and to support the water establishment in its, uh, and make it uh, possible for it to deliver on, on, its, on its mandate and to deliver good quality services to, to, the, to the population. 
Well, that's uh, great news. <laughs> okay, I'm going to address some of the questions of the audience and then I might get back to some of mine. Um, let me see uh, what we have here. We have Amal Karaki, who, was, uh, who is asking, how are the SDGs reflected or linked to the IFD projects implemented in Lebanon? Can you hear us? <laughs> yes. Sorry, this just takes a uh, oh, oh, well, for, for <laughs> the um, so I guess the question is how are the the uh, Lebanese institutions um, part of the of, of the different projects, right? No, the question is in your projects, how do you make sure that we are going towards achieving the SDGs? This is more or less uh, what the, the question I think. Ah, okay, is. Sorry. Amal, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Aman. But go ahead, please, Arthur, if you yeah, can answer. Yeah, so sure. Um, so. That is a, a that is a very difficult question. <laughs> First, one needs to to, to to understand where exactly the SDGs are about and how they link to, to one another. But um, there's actually a lot of work that's been done by AFD over the, the past uh, twelve months to to make sure that we are completely aligned with SDGs. So we, we did a mapping of all of all the projects, uh, which is what other development banks have also done, and. <clears throat> We're quite comfortable that we're already doing that because uh, for the for almost ten years now, in terms of our internal screening when we we do the appraisal of, of for projects, there's something that uh, is like uh, like a screening we have to do on the, the, all the, the dimensions of sustainable development to make sure that our projects do not do not do any harm in terms of environmental issues, social issues, climate change, gender, etc. Um, and so that 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 screening of all the projects we do um, tries to, to, to ensure that we do not choose uh, to have, let's say, for example, a very strong social agenda that would be detrimental to, to other sectors, uh, to, to, yeah. to, to other sectors and to climate mm. change, for example. Yes. So it's, uh, it's a bit theoretical what I'm saying here, so I can give more uh, cl clear examples if needed, but yeah, that's, that's basically the gist of it. Yes, and since climate uh, climate change and uh, and gender are anyway cross cutting across all your projects, so anyway you are covering at least two of these across all projects. Um, all right, I have another question from Gina Shamas. Would your organization consider that capacity building in the anti-corruption field, with objective to work on corruption prevention technical skills, be necessary for sustainable development? Uh, Gina's question is, as president of the Lebanon Certified Anti-Corruption Managers uh, NGO, registered officially in Lebanon. Okay. Um, yeah, no, anti-corruption is, uh, is is critical in Lebanon. I think there's, there's a lot of uh, countries, donors, actors already involved in the in the, in, the, in that field. Um, on AVD side, when we when Obviously, when we decide to, to invest a fill, when we decide to support an initiative, we need to make sure that we'll bring some value added. Um, and anti-corruption seems, seems to us to be a bit of a, of a crowded field. That said, uh, Expertise France, um, our, our future subsidiary, the only joining AVD group on the, on the 1st of July, has, um, is active in terms of anti-corruption in, in Lebanon um, through, through, through the funding. Act project. Yeah. The exactly project. through the act project. Yeah. Project. and on on AVD side, we've decided to to approach that question through a slightly different angle. And Rola, you can talk about it better than I can. But we're actually supporting Institut de Finance and Expertise France on um, on public procurement law mm. that we're still waiting. Uh, we're still waiting for the, the, the law to, to be to, to, to be approved by Parliament, which it will come at some point. And very soon. We, very soon. <laughs> We hope. Yeah. Well, we've had it before, but <laughs> it's been <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, and so we're supporting the the, the enactment of, of the law, and beyond that, obviously, what's more important than the law itself, uh, the, the law is, is the prerequisite. But beyond that, obviously, it's its implementation and the action plan, and making sure that all the all the different people in the different institutions that do uh, do public procurement are properly trained, that they have access to the right tools, etc. And through through the the implementation of that law, we believe uh, that will be contributing very significantly to, to anti-corruption in Lebanon and, and 
more than that to the to the to the best use possible of of public means and the the, the public uh, monies uh, of the government. Definitely, we totally agree. <laughs> Okay, I have, a, I have a question from Noor. Were there any projects made with respect to waste management in Lebanon? If not, what are your future plans for climate change in Lebanon? Um, so, no, we do not uh, have projects in terms of waste management in, <clears throat> in Lebanon. This is actually one of the questions that we, we asked ourselves uh, when we were doing so, programming in the end of last year. Um, waste management is a, a difficult field in Lebanon and there's quite a lot of other actors already involved and what we've been trying to do is to refocus our energy on, 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 on key pillars where, we, again, where we believe we can bring some, some value added. So the, the, the way we're going to, to address climate change in Lebanon is not going to be through waste management, it's not going to be through, through energy, um, although things, I mean, things might change in the future. Um, but the, for us, the question of, of climate change at this stage will be more in, in embedded in terms of, of mitigation. And um, obviously, in, in the country where water is becoming more scarce, although I mean, there are lots of other countries where the situation is much more critical, but we believe it's very important to make sure that, the, that water is used in, 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 in the best manner and that, um, that we implement good water resource management. So that will be one of the, the probably the, the main way in which we will be addressing uh, climate change. The second one will be when we uh, do the support local development initiatives, especially in terms of rural development, to make sure that um, that if we support uh, agricultural agricultural practices, sorry, uh, it's the, the best agricultural practices possible, and that uh, water is used scarcely. Um, and beyond that, that we, we do not use too to, to many bad fertilizers, etc. And, and the third point for us is, uh, I think I've illustrated that, is the question of reforestation, where, um, again, I mean, it's, it's not good enough. I mean, it's to, the fight against climate change needs to be addressed through the decrease uh, of CO2 emissions. But you can, you can also improve uh, the, the status of climate change on, on, for Lebanon in terms of, of reforesting part of the country and although that that's i mean is just a, a side benefit of improving the, the likelihoods of, of the of the populations and finally for, for us the, the question of climate change and sustainable um, environmental sustainability should be addressed in a more holistic manner and there i think for us um what we want to do is to establish a, a dialogue with our different partners in the country, and especially the ones that are more coming from a humanitarian background, and to make sure that they fully embed the, the question of environmental system and sustainability. Um, and just, I mean, I'll, I'll stop there, but just to say that a lot of humanitarian actors are used uh, to working in crisis modes and not necessarily term that long term view that I've been mentioning over and over. And one of the things we believe we can bring in terms of value added to these partners is to, to have them think in terms of what's best way to uh, electrify a refugee camp, for example, or what is the best way to manage uh, water, etc. So that will for us uh, be also critical in terms of, of greening uh, our aid for, for Lebanon. Thank you. Uh, let me get more questions. Um, as a from Alia Nazar Farhat, as a founding member and current steering committee member of the LHDF, Lebanon Humanitarian and Development Forum of Local NGOs, Al Majmua welcomes the IFT's commitment to the localization agenda and the direct funding allocated to local NGOs, most of them being members of LHDF. LHDF is looking forward to closely cooperate with the IFD in supporting the mandate of the forum, especially in regard to delivering capacity building training to the local NGOs. Do you have any comment on that or? Yeah, no, thanks. Just, uh, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you to Al Majmer for, for being present and for, uh, I, I'll, I'll read that as, as a prize of AFD's uh, <laughs> action. Exactly. <laughs> it's not, okay, sorry. Uh, now, Al Majmua is, is one of AFD's trusted partners for, for the, the whole of AFD's group, actually. Um, and that's quite interesting. That's something I, I, I skipped in my presentation because I didn't want to be too long. But as I said, I mean, there, there are three legs to, to AFD group, AFD, Popacco, and Expertise France. 
and Al Al Majma is probably the, the 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 only entity that in Lebanon that is in discussion and is benefiting from from support from the from the three. Um, the the question of uh, localization for us is is key because um, because I mean local actors are there to stay contrary to international actors I and mean, they. Uh, sorry, that, that's that's a platitude as we say in French, but I think it's very important. And what we want to do is to to do more than pay lip service to to the to the question of localization. I mean, there was the, the grand bargain is already five year five year old. Um, I'm not too sure everybody's happy, but uh, the way it's implemented, I'm still quite surprised by the fact that other development actors in Lebanon say that they really want to support local actors, Lebanese civil society organizations, but that they do not have the capacity. Um, and that surprises me a bit. Um, and it makes, makes it very exciting for us because we, we believe uh, we don't have the silver bullet, but we believe we have the right tools to, to, to make it happen. So just to take the example of al one to make everybody else jealous, but al is benefiting from funding from Expertise France through the Shabake project which is a, pro a program rather that was, that's been ongoing for a couple of years now. And the Shabake project uh, aims at providing dedicated technical support capacity building to, to different Lebanese NGOs. Um, on the, under the first component, there were eight, uh, eight uh, Lebanese NGOs. Um, and under the second component that al benefited from, we actually uh, allocated some funding for as part of the Beirut blast, uh, or response to the, to the Beirut blast. And so that, the, 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 through that Shabake pro program, the idea is for us to provide um, funding to mid to big size uh, civil society actors and NGOs in Lebanon, and to make sure that they have the right capacity to then go see that there's other donors that I was talking about just uh, two minutes ago, and make sure that they have all the right processes in place in terms of HR, IT, compliance, kind of fiduciary arrangements, etc. So that the international actors say, hey, why don't I also bring support, finance, al or um, or anybody else? So that, that for us is a, is a very, very, very big program, and we're very proud of it, and we will carry on uh, supporting it. In, 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 Supporting it, sorry, in, in the future. Beyond that, that program, uh, we've been very lucky uh, with the blast to actually benefit from very specific funding for to to target smaller grants, like in the range of ten to fifteen thousand euros, through La Guilde Européenne du, du Red. And I think they they, they announced the, the results of that call for proposals last week, and then it was only dedicated to to the Beirut blast, but it was also quite interesting to to, to have that capacity for us to to bring um, to, to bring support to much smaller uh, NGOs that would stay under AFD's radar. I didn't mention that in my presentation, but for AFD, a normal size program or projects for Lebanon in terms of grants would be around 8 million euros. Obviously, not, not, every, not everybody has the capacity to, to, to implement such a, such a, a big program. So that's um, between the Shabake project, uh, what, we've, what we did with La Guilde Européenne du Red in terms of micro projects, and what we're doing with the Fondation de France um, and the, our ability to provide on an ad hoc basis, sometimes direct funding to, to some Lebanese um, civil society organizations. We believe we have quite a wide range of, of tools that are also very complementary to what the French embassy and, and the SCAC can, can do. So, I'll, and I'll finish there. Um, just to say that we already have these tools in place, but we want to go one step further and we're in the process uh, of thinking how we can do that and have a, a very structured approach to, to, to localization, even more structured approach to localization. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Dima Sadir, will there be any change in the strategy of AFD in Lebanon in light of the current crisis? Yeah. Um, Yes and no. Um, I think the, the the process was started in, back in 2017 already um, for us to we, we got that ability to to allocate grant funding to to Lebanon. Um, as I said in my presentation, we already started switching from a 100% working 100% with the Lebanese government to um, working with a wider range of, of actors and that 
is the, the main shift that was made in back in, in 2017 and that will be carried forward in, in, in the future. Um, in terms of in terms of sector sectors, there's the, the main shift is uh, the that pillar around inclusive local development, which was not present as such in in our in our strategy. We had a, a very strong um, shall I call it a bias towards infrastructure and a very engineer approach to, for example, water sanitation uh, to uh, urban development. And we're, we're taking a different view now and we're putting communities at the center of our, of our interventions, of our projects. So this, this, I, shouldn't, I should stop saying our projects, because it's not our projects, we're just a, we're just a bank <laughs> with the people with the money, the, the projects are those, yeah, it's the projects of our the projects. <laughs> it's exactly, it's your it's project, it's not, it's not <laughs> ours, so sorry about that. Um, and so we really want to put the, those communities, the, the actors we, we work with, at the, the center of that approach and say, what are, what are the needs? What, and when the needs are um, having a bigger say in what's happening in the community, um, living better with the other communities present and on the same territory, then that is that is what should be at the core of our approach. And then from that, we say, okay, then we'll finance wood infrastructure, we'll finance agricultural development or uh, the refurbishment of, of, of a street, etc. But And so that is probably the, the main shift in terms of, of, of going forward. The, the second shift, which was already ongoing, is around the question of, of governance. And there, again, Institute of Finance is a very trusted partner of, of AFDs, but that's something that's still quite new for, for, for AFD um, because historically um, governance was directly managed by, by the French Ministry of Foreign Affairs worldwide, that's not just for Lebanon, and that changed also around 2017, 2018. And since then in Lebanon, we've, we've tried to increase our footprint in a, in a se sector that by definition is very difficult and very uh, wide ranging because governance, I mean, you can deal with a lot of different things. We've, we've decided for the, for the near future to focus our, our energy on economic and, and financial governance issues. And in the medium to long term, depending on our um, capacity and the, the needs of, of the country, we might enlarge the, 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 the focus and include, uh, for exa example, the question of access to, to, to justice. And finally, uh, I think I, I mentioned it in my presentation, something that uh, was in our strategy, but that was not, uh, well, not really implemented was the question of gender equality. And I mean, we, we, to be honest, we're not very good at it. And we are now really working really hard to embed that question in all our programs. And to also have some dedicated, some programs that are dedicated to uh, rebalancing uh, gender inequalities. Thank you. Uh, Amal Dreili, I noticed that the AFD does not have any intention to work with the most vulnerable people, the farmers. Are you intending to give funds for construction of hill lakes? These are two questions by Amal Dreili. The first one concerns working with, part, with farmers, and the other one is asking whether you're willing to fund any construction of hill lakes. Um, Construction of, sorry, of? Hill lakes. Ah, hill lakes, oh, sorry, okay. Hill lakes. So um, my apologies if I, if, if I sounded like AUD is not interested in the most vulnerable communities in the country because, uh, and I yeah. should have been. This is their, ma <laughs> this is their mandate. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and actually it is um, in the, in the discussions we're having internally and with the French government, actually the uh, the focus is on on vulnerable communities. And obviously, the the question is how do you define vulnerable vulnerable communities? Um, the international community for a very long time, and because it, it, they were the most vulnerable, focus on on, on the refugees. Um, I spoke to, to that a bit earlier, but now the, the, there's a very strong shift. Acknowledging the fact that the, with the economic crisis, economic collapse, the, the country is going through, more and more uh, Lebanese communities are, are in need and should be supported. Um, so that's in terms of nationalities. Then the question is, uh, where do these where do these people live? Um, and unfortunately, the 
in a country where more than 50% of the population is deemed poor, they, they live pretty much everywhere. But it, it is true that a lot of the most vulnerable communities happen to, to be in the rural areas. Um, and we will be working, we are working with, uh, with farming communities and we will be working more with farming communities. Um, and not to not to, to pinpoint or to single out social uh, work and but we're in the process of of appraising a substantial program that's around 18 million euros that will be dedicated to agricultural communities in the, in, in, in the country I will not say too much about it now because uh, the product is not approved by Obol, so I'm actually not meant to talk about it at all but it, we will be focusing on, on bringing support to to the to those communities. Uh, with regards to Heal Lakes, um, the, the same program that I, I was mentioning at the end of my presentation was uh, I showed a couple of pictures on the reforestation program. The, the same program actually also includes the, 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 crew, the construction sorry, of, of Heal Lakes. Um, that part of the program is still going to take a while because the, the procurement, procurement again, still needs to happen. Yeah. And we are hoping to start the construction uh, mid 2022, and I shouldn't say we because I will not be doing the, the I will not be the person shoveling and, and, and building the cell legs, but the CDI will be uh, procuring uh, local entrepreneurs to do that. Great, thank you very much for this information. Uh, Basma Abdel Khali, what are IFD's views about the role of state institutions in leading reforms towards reviving good governance, embracing digital transformation, and ensuring a suitable environment for economic recovery in Lebanon? And how will the 2021-2025 IFD plan tackle the challenges of building institutional capacities? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I wish I had a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's, a, it's a very tricky question. Um, I think, I, I actually, Ivana, you, you, you're better suited than me, <laughs> better qualified than me to talk about reforms. Uh, but I'll, Don't I'll throw back the ball at me. <laughs> the question is addressed to IFT. <laughs> so, so the way we will address that, that difficult question is by supporting Institut de Finance and making it Institut de Finance. Here you go. Here you no, go. You see, it was easy. <laughs> Um, that, that, that is part of, of the that is part of the truth. Uh, so we will be working very closely with Institut de Finance on on public procurement, but we're also discussing the, um, on the question of, of public transparency. No, sorry, budget transparency, uh, which is a, a program we're hoping to launch mid twenty twenty one. So yeah. April already. We need to to, to move. We're already mid, almost mid twenty twenty one. Time is running. Yeah, we'll, fast. we'll have to accelerate. Um, <laughs> so th that is th that is part of the uh, that is part of the the answer. Then I think what's very important for for us is also to acknowledge the fact that. Um, so it's very disturbing because when I'm looking in, in my, my computer, I'm seeing myself. I can't see anybody else. So it's it feels that I'm talking to myself. Uh, um, can you see now. me at least? No, I can't. I've been, you don't I've even been, see me? Oh. I've been trying discreetly to change the setting, but I can't. So, uh, it's fine. Suzanne, can we do something about that? It's, no, it's probably me on my side. Uh, I'm a poor. Maybe it's, all, it's your yeah, it's your settings because. Uh, um, okay. Can you see anything else now? If Suzanne has done something. It's fine. I think it's coming. Sorry. See. Okay. No. Now you you should know it's your camera. Yeah. No. Still no. Okay. So I was I was buying some time to to, to so that I avoid having to to answer the, the question. But anyway, I, I felt. Um, so yeah. No. It's, 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 sorry. More seriously, um, I think what is important also in terms of of support to to good governance and reforms is to acknowledge the fact that uh, it can't just be a, an approach through through government institutions. Um, I think, I mean, I, I, I spoke about how working directly with a, a hospital like Rafika um, and the ICRC, we can try to promote a better governance, functioning uh, public institutions, etc. But I, I strongly believe that part of the answer to, to reforms and good governance is also by supporting civil society actors. Because uh, if there's no uh, no strong demand from 
from the populations, from the communities for better governance, then it's less likely to happen. And it's, uh, this is why in the third key uh, objective I mentioned, the importance for us to, to support non-state actors. And the, the idea is not to support non-state actors to weaken the state. That's not, I mean, that's, that's completely beside the point. Yes. Our, our goal, uh, and I hope I made it very clear, is to support a functioning state. But a functioning state means that the state that is working to the benefit of the population. And for that, it's important for the populations to, to have the capacity to say what they want, what they need, and to, to, hold, the state, uh, to hold state and public institutions accountable. So we also want to, to work uh, with um, different civil society actors for that reason. And then, uh, just to, to give a couple of examples, but uh, we have a regional program which is called CARIB, uh, which supports different media in the region, and it actually is super active in, in Lebanon. And there the idea is to support uh, online media, radio, uh, newspapers, etc., um, so that journalists have the capacity to investigate uh, what and how the government is run at the central level, at the local level, and to make sure that, uh, for example, malpractices or bad practices are, are reported, but also to make sure that, uh, we're talking about the public procurement law or budget transparency, to make sure that in the media, or the media have the capacity to report on these things. Um, because... Uh, it's important uh, to say that uh, money is not well spent in the country. It's critical, but it's also important to say, to report that and to have civil society organizations, media that can report on that and say, hey, this is how much the, the budget is and this is how it's spent, and this is how it could be spent in a better way. So really to support uh, these actors so that they have the, the capacity to, 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 the media, sorry, so that they have the capacity to, to report on those things. The second example I would like to give is, uh, um, the support that will be launching very soon with uh, the Institut Sam Fares from AUB and the, sorry, I don't know the name in, in, in English, but the Conseil Economique et Social. Uh, ECOSOC. Sorry? Just called ECOSOC. ECOSOC, ECOSOC everybody ECOSOC. knows ECOSOC. it as ECOSOC, right. yeah. ECOSOC. Um, and so we'll be supporting them on a program that we've called the Public Policy Dialogue. And the idea there is to, uh, to work around the, the question on environmental transition or environmental issues and to bring to you, together all the acts, all the stakeholders from the, uh, in the country to create a platform of, of dialogue based on, on very sound research that will be done by the Institut Sam Fares and to use the, 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 the papers that will be producing, the data they will be gathering and to put it on the table of all these stakeholders and to create a platform between public uh, institutions, public uh, government representatives, and uh, civil society actors and say, okay, this is the state, uh, status quo of, of environment, of energy, of water, water usage in, in Lebanon. How can we improve that? But really to, to create the platform for these actors to speak to one another and to come, to, to, to come with solutions that are implementable. And through that, I believe, sorry, because the question was about governance and reforms. And I believe these types of processes can then maximize the, uh, the proba probability that the reforms will actually lead to something because we have the buy-in from all the, all the stakeholders. Okay. Uh, we have Yusuf Fawaz who's saying the microcredit sector operating in Lebanon is facing significant, oops, sorry, I missed it. Uh, I lost it, I lost it, I lost it. Sorry, oh, just one minute. Uh, I, for some reason, voila. The micro the microcredit sector operating in Lebanon is facing significant challenges. Considering the positive role microfinance could play in terms of economic recovery, does the IFD have any plans to support this sector? Um, it's uh, a very good point. Uh, we are. Uh, we're looking at providing some support and as part of some of our programs, for example, the, the program that we have in the, in the in terms of rural agricultural de development, um, Popaco or subsidiary de dedicated to, to the private sector has been in discussions with different uh, microfinance institutions in, in Lebanon um, to, to try to see what their needs are and what support could, could be brought in. And, and there, we will be providing some support late, later this year in, in the sector. 
Um, the, the reality um, is that uh, to, to have a, a sound micro, to, how to put it, um, but the needs are great. And normally in a country like Lebanon, pre-2019, October 2019, the only way, uh, the best way to, to support microfinance institutions would be to, to bring loans because microfinance institutions lend money. Uh, at the moment, it is a bit difficult given the, the, the financial and economic context in, in the country uh, for, for AVD Group to, to provide loans. Uh, so we'll be providing support. It's, it's, unfortunately, it's not going to be, to be at scale. That said, um, in the different discussions that I've had over the past six months that I've been in the country, it's not small now, eight. Um, I, I see there is a very strong appetite from the international community to, to work on supporting uh, entrepreneurship, private sector development, microfinance institutions, etc. So I believe there's quite a bit of funding that should be uh, flowing into, into, the, into the sector. And um, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you will have, will have heard of the Lebanon, uh, Lebanon Financing Facility, the LFF, so that's the trust fund that is established by the, by the World Bank um, that falls under the umbrella of the reform recovery and reconstruction framework, the, the famous 3RF. And through, through that trust fund, uh, quite a bit of money should be going to, to microfinance institutions. And AVD uh, will be contributing to, to the trust fund. Thank you. Um, one more question from Amal Karaki. I believe IFD, as well as other international development agencies, consider Lebanon as an upper middle country, with, which is a criterion upon which financial resources uh, are allocated, I think. Do you think that this is applicable with all the horrendous crisis Lebanon is facing? Um. Yeah, the, the, the situation has changed quite, quite drastically uh, over the past 18 months. And I mean, the, the new numbers that were very recently released by, uh, by Banque du Liban uh, or by, by the IMF and the World Bank are X1 shivers when you, just a recalculation of the drop in GDP from 2019, the numbers from last year and the, and the forecast for this year. Uh, and it's quite clear that by the end of 2021, Lebanon will no longer be in an upper middle income country. Um, the, the difficulty for, for us, I don't know if you recall the, the map that I showed earlier um, of where AFD operates in the world, is that Lebanon is in a very difficult spot at the moment. Um, but we still, as a development bank that operates in 115 countries, we, we compare it with the other countries where we work. And Lebanon still isn't as, as bad, sorry to use that word, as, as Mali, or there are lots of other countries that have even stronger needs where the GDP per capita is much lower than Lebanon even today. So the, the question for, for, for any country is, um, where, do, where, where should we put our grants? Uh, what is, where is the priority? Is it Mali or, or, or Lebanon? France firmly believes that Lebanon deserves support and, and I'm going to repeat myself a bit there, but historically it was because of the presence of refugees, because these were the people that actually had the needs uh, that should be addressed through grants, while uh, the needs of the Lebanese population could be, uh, could be supported through the provision of, of loans to the, to the Lebanese government. Today the picture has changed a bit and I think the, most of the international community now acknowledges the fact that uh, the, the, the needs are very great for, for, for the vulnerable Lebanese and there are more and more vulnerable Lebanese. So part of our funding now is going to be allocated to, 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 to beyond the host communities. And I think all the countries are moving in, in that direction. The, the difficulty is also uh, then becomes very political. And I think it goes back to, to, the, to the discussions in, back in 2018, the cell discussion that the international community is willing to do more. Uh, provided the Lebanese government as a share of the work, and that the share of the, of the work on the Lebanese part is to implement the reforms that I mean, everybody knows about, um, and that have not been implemented. Very few of, of the commitments that were made in 2018 by the, by the Lebanese uh, government, have, very few of them have been implemented. Most of the work hasn't been done. And the, the, the sad reality is that uh, it's not through, through grants that we it's not grants that Le Lebanon needs, or not just grants that Lebanon needs. I mean, the, the magnitude of the funding that is needed today 
goes beyond anything that any country is going to be able to provide in terms of grants. The, 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 the country will need to be able to access long-term funding through loans in the, in the near future. And that requires um, doing the, the, the reforms, etc. reforms, but also striking a deal with the, with the IMF. And without that, uh, it's, I, don't, I mean, the, the grants that the international community is providing will remain a, um, um, important uh, for the, and because communities need it. A lot of people are, have lost their income and livelihoods, etc. but that will not be sufficient. Great. Totally. I have a question from Rami. Shifting your funding more from funding governmental institutions to non-governmental institutions, what are the changes on your control procedures level? Hearing all these various support from different sectors, industries, regions, is the IFD doing any analysis on their support efficiencies? Like which sector is more effective to support them? That's a, it's a very good question. I mean, you should be sitting on the AFD's board or, or you're prob you probably are like asking them. I'm like, I suspect that someone from the French government asked you to ask me that question. This is typically the, the type of questions we're being asked when we go to our board, when we discuss our programming for country by country. Um, it's, I mean, I'll try to answer not to be, my answer not to be too, too bureaucratic, but yes, we do, when we decide where to allocate our funding, we obviously make a, some sort of SWOT analysis. Uh, and the SWOT analysis includes whether we have a good understanding of, of the of the sector and its actors, and whether we have the ability to maximize the, the value for, for money of the of the French taxpayers. Uh, maybe I haven't said it very clearly, but obviously, I mean, any grant that AVD allocates to Lebanon is money that is being paid by by someone in France, by someone's taxes, and so there's the, the standards that are applied by AFD in terms of, of making sure that the, the money is well spent are very high. And in terms of accountability, our government is very good at making sure that we are held accountable. So um, we do that sort of analysis sector by sector, but also project by project. And when we decided to, to shift from government to partial shift from government to, to non-state actors, obviously we thought to, we're like, so who are going to work with? Um, and when we, we decide to, to, to support a, a program, or sometimes we decide not to support a program or a project because we, we think that the partner is just not strong enough. And for us, what does it mean a strong partner? Obviously, I mean, it's in terms of technical capacities, in terms of making sure that all our environmental and social and, and gender criteria are met, but also making sure that the, the money will be spent where it's meant to be spent. And there we have, I mean, I mean, some of, of, of the partners are present here and they could testify to that were, were very annoying when it comes to uh, making sure that we know where the, where the money is, is being spent. So on most of our programs, and this is very annoying to our partners, we ask the partners to open project accounts. We have auditors that come and audit the, the accounts every year. We have, I mean, we do uh, our own screening, etc. So we, we are quite comfortable with the fact that the, the, the money, the ta French taxpayers' money actually is going to where it's meant to be going. So that means it's going to the most vulnerable communities, including the, the farmers. Um, and it goes to supporting to, to supporting reforms where, where government, government is willing to, to, to do reforms. Very interesting. I have maybe one more question. How does IFD coordinate its action along with that of other donors, such as the World Bank, the EU? How do you do that? I spent hours in meetings. That's how I would do it. <laughs> this, <laughs> uh, to be to, to be very to be very frank, when I so I I, I moved to Lebanon on, a, on the twenty fourth of August, um, and I think I, I wrote a, a like a how is it called like. A rap, we call it a rapport d'étonnement in French. It's like, a, <laughs> I don't, yeah. it's like, wow, what the, um, so now after a month. And one of the things I, I put in that very brief report was that, my goodness, the, the aid architecture in, in, in Lebanon is really non-existent. Um, there are so many, so many, I'm sorry, I, I hope I'm not going to be too much poked at it, but there are so many different groups. Uh, everybody complains that there are too many meetings. Um, 
I, I mean, I usually have, I don't know, anything between three to five donors meetings every week. And as just the ones at my level, I'm not talking about the ones at, that are being managed by my, my whole office, but I, I'll give you a number. Actually, so in October, after spending hours and hours in, in meetings, I asked my colleagues to, to make a list of all the different donors groups they, they, they were attending. So my operational team here uh, has less than 10 people, actually more like eight, and they had they attended more than 30 donors meetings, different donors groups, sorry. Um, so th this is how we coordinate ourselves. Uh, we spend hours talking to, to each other. Um, the problem is that they, I mean, in other countries, you would have a very clear ed architecture and the government would be in the steering seat and, and say, okay, well, this is how we're going to, to structure what different sectoral groups there is. Here is the lead donor, is the, the minister, line ministry who is in charge of organizing and there are minutes, etc. In Lebanon, it's, it's a bit more complicated. Um, there, are, there are lots of different subgroups, etc. And, uh, and yeah, that's probably one of the one of the of the main issues that needs to, to be sorted the that said um, the UN and and the World Bank through and the EU through the 3RF initiative are, are making really good work at trying to streamline all these different subgroups and the the UN is also doing a great job Najat which is doing a very good job at trying to to align all the different humanitarian processes and to make sure that that at least that part of the aid architecture is quite clear and then leaks very clearly into the to the rest of the, the aid of, of the aid support uh, on our side and I'll, I'll stop my I'll stop there um, we are currently reviewing the the aid structure in terms of the water and sanitation um, sector where AD has the has the lead thanks to funding from, from the EU to actually revamp the, the, the governance of, of the sector. And we're trying to, to streamline and to limit the numbers of, of subgroups and to, to make sure that very clear the reporting lines and very clear links between the, the different subgroups so that everybody understands what's happening in, in the sector and that all the donors have access to the same type of information and that there's no duplication. Et it's, I mean, it's, uh, we're talking about long-term challenges earlier and taking the long-term view. I mean, obviously that the question of partnerships between donors and clear ed architecture is a, is a long-term process and will take a bit more work. Well, thank you, Mr. Jamo. I think this is an excellent note maybe to close on about coordination, coordinating the action in Lebanon. We would like to thank you for your time, uh, really, and for the precious information you have shared with us and our audience today. Uh, I have this new strategy, once validated, we hope it's going to be soon, can only be beneficial to Lebanon, especially that it promotes a two-way approach to partnership, which we don't see often with uh, donors, an approach that encourages co-learning, co-invention, co-construction, co-funding, co-implementation. So thank you all for your participation, and we look forward to your presence on the next IOF talk, which, which is going to happen in a couple of days with Madame Cécile Dejou. It's happening on April 8th. It will tackle managerial innovation in a digital world and other talks which we will be launching very soon. So thank you all for your presence with us today. And thank you, Mr. Germont, for having spent this uh, time with us and for all the explanations and information that you gave. And uh, if you want to say one last word, Mr. Germont. Uh, well, two, happy birthday and thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you all. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Excellent. Catapultique.